Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Good morning, everyone. This is Johnny Tan, author of From My Mama's Kitchen, Food for the Soul, Recipes for Living. Welcome to my weekly From My Mama's Kitchen talk radio show. My guest for this morning is award-winning writer and editor Jennifer Quasha. Jennifer and I will be discussing about her latest books in the Chicken Soup for the Soul series titled I Can't Believe My Dog Did That and I Can't Believe My Cat Did That. Good morning, Jennifer. Welcome to From My Mama's Kitchen Talk Radio. How are you doing this morning? Hi, Johnny. Thanks so much. I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for having me on your show. I'm delighted to have you on the show. The books are wonderful. They're very well put together. The stories are funny, moving, and full of heart. And I really like the book covers. They are adorable, and they just speak to you. Buy me, buy me. (laughs) I know. They're so cute. I mean, you know, babies and dogs and cats and pets will sell sell anything, but these are in particular are so cute because they look. They we all know about naughty pets, and um, our covers have uh, good images of naughty pets. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on that! Let us start by getting to know you a little bit better. Please give us a quick walkthrough of your life from childhood to the present moment. That's such a big question, but I think I'm going to keep it focused on uh, on my on the pets. Um, in my life, but I was when I was born, I we there was a cat in the family, um, and I was an only child. And when I was six years old, my parents got me a um, English Springer Spaniel, um, who I adored and really became my sibling. So she was with me and lived in our family from when I was six to when I was 21. So it's it's really quite amazing when you don't have a human sibling how um, animals really fill mm-hmm. fill that. Um, so. She uh, passed away, unfortunately, when I was 21, and I was, you know, desperate to get an, an, another dog after that. Um, waited two years until I was 23, and um, found another uh, dog, a little Bichon Frise, a little white, um, mm-hmm. fluffy thing, to join my life. And um, he was with me for 16 years. So I've always had a dog. I've always had a dog in my life. I've also had fish and other things like that, but but uh, <laughs> dog has really been an important part of my life, and we now have um, a, a rescued uh, beagle mix named Sugar. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. I find that dogs are wonderful and very engaging, and I do have cats when I was growing up. You mentioned about your dog had lived 16 years. That's wonderful because a lot of times, I mean, dog doesn't live that long. Yes, well, you know, um, small dogs tend to live longer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was very good at um, keeping uh, Scout very healthy. So <laughs> poor little guy didn't get half as many treats as he really deserved. Um, but he he lived a nice long life because he was able to take long walks with me. And yeah, we fed yeah. him good food, and it just kept him alive. Yeah, that's wonderful. Because a lot of times when you have cats, it's like it seems it lives forever. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. So it's it's just a little bit different. I can't believe my dog did that, and I can't believe my cat did that. They're wonderful books. So how did that all get started? Um, Well, Chicken Soup for the Soul um, Mm -hmm. contacted me um, looking for someone to co-author their pet series. And since Mm -hmm. I've had um, a long or long or I've written other books on pets, Mm -hmm. um, they contacted me to see whether I might be interested in helping them out with those two series. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and that was a big, that was just a wonderful, wonderful uh, thing for me. It's such a wonderful, it's such a great series of books, such a great series of titles. Um, they've changed their look over the last five or so years, and they're mm-hmm. really very current. And the writing is fantastic, and it's just a wonderful brand, and it's a real treat for me to be able to work with them. I feel very honored. That's wonderful. You personally have written about 40 books or so, so how is that transition between the things that you have done and say now confined to the, I guess, the standards or the uh, the outlines that Chicken Soup has? Well, I have I have written, uh, I think as, as any mm-hmm. good writer does, they, they write as much <laughs> as they can <laughs> because they love to do it and in yeah. order to make a living as a writer, you need to write. You can't sit there and think all the time. So, um, in the early stages, I basically did what anyone wanted me to do um, in any mm-hmm. sort of writing. So um, I ended up clocking a lot of uh, titles in writing for the school and library market, children's yeah. books early on, and um, 
as I, you know, as I got more and more experience, I was able to focus in on on um, subjects that were, you know, dear to my heart. And mm-hmm. um, of late, those have been, you know, pet titles. So mm-hmm. uh, that's really how how I, you know, how I've been able to um, do what I do now. That's wonderful. What was your favorite part in putting the collection together? I. I, I have to say, I just love being a co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul books. There is nothing. We get over somewhere between a thousand and two thousand submissions for every single book. Chicken wow. Soup has a database of writers, mm-hmm. and a lot of times those writers are in writers' workshops, or they let other people know that there um, is a book coming out. But for the mm-hmm. most part, Chicken Soup for the Soul sends out um, a call out to all of its. It's writers who have um, mm-hmm. been published with them in the past. And um, people write and submit stories. And it is such an honor for me to have these people spend time. As a writer, I know how hard it is to, to write and to pull together certainly a personal story um, and share it with people you don't know. And so many people um, offer their hearts to us and, and, mm-hmm. per- and, and write wonderful, heartwarming, inspirational stories. And it is just a gift for me to be able to read those from people. Mm-hmm. And so it's a real treat for me. And I really, really, really enjoy reading every single one. And I read every single one. Every single chicken soup story <laughs> is read at least by two pairs of eyes. Uh-huh. Um, and so for me, it's just it's a real treat to be able to have that um have that uh, communication with a lot of people who who really yeah. pour, pour their heart and soul out to us. That's very interesting. So we come to this most important question right here. Do you think there's a fundamental difference between dog and cat people? <laughs> I love this question, and it's, it's so funny because no one seems to be able to stop asking it. Uh-huh. Um, I don't think that there's a fundamental difference between dog and cat people. If there's any fundamental difference, I think it's between pet people and non-pet people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because it's people who um, want to love and share their life with an animal versus yeah. people who don't want to share their life with an animal. And so I think there's the fundamental difference. I think dogs and cats, depending on the stage of our lives and yeah. what we can mm-hmm. handle and how much responsibility we we need. I mean, you know, there are people who have one cat, and there are people who have seven seven dogs, and there are people who have ten cats, and there are people who have one dog. I mean, those those are those are just different, you know, different people yeah. loving different animals in different quantities. <laughs> it's the people who say, "Ooh, I don't like dogs," or "Ooh, I don't like cats," that I sort yeah. of look at them and say, "Hmm, I'm not sure." You know, we have a lot in common. <laughs> So in short, basically, if you want to experience unconditional love, either go get married or get yourself a pet. <laughs> well, I don't even know if you can get it. It's guaranteed if you get married. <laughs> there you go. That's a good one. And then if you're single and you don't have anything, well, sorry, you're out of luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. What would you like for your readers to gain from reading the books? You know, my my. Uh, biggest thing in life is to laugh. If you can't laugh, you're in real trouble. And the great thing about I can't believe my dog did that and I can't believe my cat did that, these books in particular are really funny. Mm -hmm. Um, There are just a lot of funny situations that our our pets do. And um, the last two books I did for Chicken Soup for the Soul are are My Dog's Life and My Cat's Life. And that Mm -hmm. really went through the ages and stages of... um, dog and cat ownership and you know puppyhood and kittenhood and then going mm-hmm. to the teenage years and adulthood mm-hmm. and then and and being becoming a senior and then you know ob- and obviously the end of life and so you don't have you know there there definitely were a lot of funny stories in there too but you you know yeah this this story this book is re- these books were um harder to put together in a way because it's very hard to write a successful and funny story humor is one of the hardest things right. to write and to collect an entire book of really remarkable stories about animals <laughs> doing, you know, funny, crazy, heartwarming things um, was was a tough thing. But I think the result is really incredible. These, you you can sit down um, and uh, read one, two, three, however many stories, and you can get really hoot and howl after um, 
reading some of the stories that the readers have to share. It's true. I really enjoyed reading both books. I mean, they're just wonderful stories from all different angles, and that's what I like about it. I have selected some stories from the various subtitles as talking points for this morning for us. Please give us a short rundown of each of the authors and their wonderful stories as I tell you which topics they are, if you don't mind. Okay, sure. I'll do my best. <laughs> okay, great. The first one is, of course, we're going to talk about dogs first because I know that you like dogs, so we're going to start with dogs first. Okay. <laughs> Under the title of One of a Kind, Kitchen Renovation, I thought it was really funny, by Lil Blossfield, I believe. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. Right, right. Well, this is a great story. Um, first of all, I really appreciate it because um, we or, or all uh, – most of us can uh, appreciate this, but but since I also have a beagle mix, um, mm -hmm. I, I really you know felt uh, in tune with her and her um, beagle mix Bojangles, who was called BJ. Mm -hmm. um, this story called Kitchen Renovation is about how BJ was always getting in trouble chewing things, and he would go to the laundry, and then she would move the laundry away, and he'd go to the trash, and then he, she'd move the trash away, and um, they they'd try to remove any desirable thing that BJ would want to eat, uh, being a beagle. And uh, they came back one day to find out that um, BJ had eaten their kitchen floor. <laughs> 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 so, you know, some dogs, you just, you just can't, um, you just can't dissuade them for, from what they want to do. So I'm not exactly sure what they ended up doing. Um, but, uh, but, you know, that, that is, Hopefully it's not something that happens to everybody, but everyone can certainly relate to a dog that uh, that wants to wants to chew and eat. And you see, that's the thing about dogs doing it, though. I mean, after a while, they're okay with it. The parents are okay with it. If I were to do that, I probably lost my college fund. <laughs> that's funny. Or probably better still disown. <laughs> right, right, right. Put up for well, adoption. You you could do it to your own house. <laughs> That's right. There you but go. But not the house you grew up in. <laughs> yeah, you know. I mean, it's just like too bad. It's, it's amazing. So right. I thought it was really funny, and and it was really a cool. Uh, it's a cool story. Yeah, it is. It is funny, and and um, one that I think everyone can appreciate. <laughs> the yeah. next one is in the doghouse, and right. the title is the Cookie Monster, and this is based on your dog. It is. It is. Yes. This is. Um, this is based on my dog, um, and I think that, you know, people who own dogs understand how smart dogs are, um, and some some people understand how how stupid their dogs are. So some dogs aren't very aren't very smart, and we have certainly had our, our share of, of of not so intelligent dogs. Um, but uh, my dog Winston really uh, outsmarted me this time with the Cookie Monster. I had brought. Um, I had been given, this is when I was living in New York City, and I was a single single person working in publishing, and I had this, you know, Winston at Bichon Frise, who was probably a, probably a couple years old at this point. Um, and I had been given around Christmas time one of those tins of cookies that um, had been, you know, some of those tins of cookies that are, that are sort of over the counter are, mm -hmm. have that cellophane tape that's, that's taped around the edge. So there's just no way in heck you can open that, that tin. Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. to peel off the, the tape. Right. It's like that super tape. And then inside this tin, um, each cookie was individually wrapped. Um, and this tin I had placed inside of a zippered bag. Um, and I had left it on a chair in my living room covered with a pile of coats, which is why I forgot. Mm -hmm. So I went off to work one day and came back and found the tin opened and um, Winston was eating a cookie held, <laughs> held between his paws. He looked up at me, you know, he's had, this, you know, a couple, he was like having a great time with his, his mm -hmm. cookie. And I was like, I got, I was like, Winston, how can you mm -hmm. do this? You know? Mm -hmm. And um, it turned out that he had hidden around the house before he decided to eat his cookie or his fourth cookie, he he had hid hidden around in his favorite hiding places um, all the rest of the cookies. And even when I thought I had counted the number of cookies that were in the tin um, and I'd collected the cookie wrappers and I'd collected the ones that he had hidden, he still managed to f 
fi- come in the mm-hmm. c- find one last cookie that I had missed. Um, <laughs> proudly, you know, sort of mm-hmm. hopping into the hopping into the kitchen while I was cooking dinner. So he he really outsmarted me, and you know, I, I, as much as you um as much as I was angry, I was. Also a little bit proud. <laughs> <laughs> well, he suddenly reminded me of uh, Pile, my dog, because he has his own placements when he eats. And my mom really treated the dog like a member of the family. Yeah. And I remember growing up, and this is when I was a kid, and my mom would give Pile uh, a banana, peel it about halfway, and Pile could just hold it in his hands and start peeling the rest and eat the banana. You know, I mean, it's like really, really funny. And then the other thing about it, uh, guess what? If anything falls off the placemat, he's not going to eat that. You know, that's dirty. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, it's like unbelievable. I mean, the dog knows what's good and what's not good. And then, Oh, that's picky. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he eats ice cream. He could hold, you know, ice cream on the stick, that is, you know, so he could right. hold that little stick and then he starts licking. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really, really cute. And so I enjoy that moment. But, of course, as a child, you only have all the good stuff. <laughs> right, right. Stuff. <laughs> right, not the so responsibility. That, right, right, right. So that's the that's the difference. Uh, the next story is kind of interesting as well. Let's Play Ball is the subtitle. And the title of the story is Operation Donut Binge by Christy Keller. Right, right. Um, it, this this is again is not is is sort of similar to my Winston story, mm-hmm. and that's that a couple has a box of donuts on their counter. They they love donuts, and um, the the wife comes back from being out and sees that all the donuts are gone, and she looks at her husband and is like, or doesn't even look, doesn't even communicate with him. Says to herself, I cannot believe he ate all ten of those donuts, <laughs> and. Then they go and get another batch of donuts, and then they, the donuts are gone again. And the and the, the husband thinks to the wife, "I can't believe she's eating all those donuts." And finally, you know, after a little a little while, a couple days, they sort of say to them, say to one of the other you know, ones to the other, "I can't believe you ate all those donuts, honey." And she said, "What are you talking about? You ate all those donuts." And it turns out that neither of them ate all the donuts. That the dog ate all the donuts, of course, and that no one ever knew. It was a bunch of chocolate donuts, and this uh, this dog was able to jump up, eat the donuts, and hide all evidence, and not look chocolatey at all. And <laughs> he's the one who got all the donuts. <laughs> so it's it, it's hard to stand between an uh, an animal and their uh, a dog and their food. <laughs> well, <laughs> the dog is a spoiled child. That's how he goes. Isn't right, <laughs> right, right. So funny. The next story, I think it's it's a wonderful story because it really kind of connects with people. It really showed the connection of a dog being a little psychic to me in some ways. Right. This is this is you've ch- you chose one of my absolute favorite stories in the book called True Angel. Um, yeah. It's it's really an incredible book, uh, incredible story, and um, again, I think all of us just get really changed when we are able to read a story like this and digest digest it and 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 the story is that a woman um adopted a 2-year-old um poodle terrier mix and um named her Angel. Um she'd been abused and she'd um come from another shelter as um a stray and she was skinny and shy um and she really changed um, this woman's life because she mm-hmm. lived alone and had and has MS. Um, and they they really are, are a wonderful couple. And the dog, because of that, um, because of her her MS, is able to go to the bathroom on a on a wee wee pad in in the home. Um, but one night, um, Angel just um, was whining and was very very anxious and woke. Um, Jan up in the middle of the night at around 1.30 in the morning and really wanted to go outside. And just Jan realized this is such odd and strange behavior that there must be something going on, maybe, even though she was able to go to the bathroom and everything inside. So um, she often walked her dog in the parking lot um, on the side of their building. And the dog, Angel, was pulling her and pulling her as hard as she could and whining. And um, so finally uh, Jan unhooked the dog's leash um, and instead of going over to the grass, um, like she usually did, she ran into the parking lot between two parked cars. 
um, an angel was sitting next to another tenant in the building who was lying on the ground in a fetal position um, with his walker nearby him. Um, and the man wasn't fully conscious, um, mm -hmm. and it was 38 degrees outside, and he only had on shorts and a, and a light jacket, um, and he had fallen about an hour before. Um, and there's no th – their apartment where they live doesn't look out onto the parking lot, um, there was no way Angel could have heard mm -hmm. uh, the man, um, but they they were able to call 911. She put her coat over the, the man's legs, and um, literally his life was saved mm -hmm. um, because of this dog. And it's it, it, it's it's unbelievable because there there is no explanation for this. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 uh, it's it's it just goes to show we we don't know we don't know what they understand we don't know what they smell and they hear and we we can't always just put our finger on exactly the relationship and the human bond that mm -hmm. we have with animals and right. um, this is a wonderful explanation and 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 uh, showing a story of that right right. I thought it was a wonderful story because, again, like you had mentioned, it's something that if we allowed ourselves to be aware of the fact that animals do have a certain amount of senses that really connects for the good, right? then we will appreciate stories like this. Yeah, and it's it's it is a great mystery. You know, none of us mm -hmm. can none of us can explain it explain it mm -hmm. as much as we might want to, or the scientific world wants to um, mm -hmm. explain it. We we those of us who have animals just know with our heart about that connection, and mm -hmm. sometimes it's really truly exceptional, like a story like this. Yes, very true. And the next one is "Love Me, Love My Dog," and the title is "Destiny" by Monica Andrew Kinnaman, and this is a wonderful story as well. Yeah, this is this is another another um wonderful uh and and it goes it just goes to show again you know that what you see isn't what you get and you know after owning um purebred dogs I I finally mm -hmm. ventured out into the rescue world and I and I wouldn't say to everybody that a rescue dog is the best because they may not be for for a variety of reasons maybe you have young children or um, uh, but rescue dogs really are incredible animals, and what you see is not necessarily what you get when you mm -hmm. go to the town because they've often been in such horrible situations. And you know, just like any human, no one no one comes out of a, a prison or a cell or, or anything and and doesn't adapt and change in some way. So a lot of times you don't know what you have. But this story is wonderful because this woman. Um, the the author uh, Monica really uh, liked to rescue um, old and abused dogs, and mm -hmm. despite living in America, she grew up in England and um, always loved herding dogs. Yet she was never able to adopt a um, specific herding dog. That's not that <laughs> they they didn't come in the ones <laughs> she wasn't the really they weren't the really abused ones. So. Mm -hmm. um, and she had decided that, you know, toward the end, um, toward, as she got older, that she was, she was like, I'm not rescuing any more dogs. It's been, it's been too much. Um, and, uh, but one day her phone rang, and it was um, a supervisor of the, the um, organization that she often rescued dogs from. And um, one of them was a Border Collie. And so she... Uh, she against all of her <laughs> all of <laughs> saying no 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 ended up taking in this border collie and she was a wreck when this dog came in bony um neglected um starved um and after a few months she had filled out and her her coat was um had had grown in thick and shiny and she recovered and ended up becoming one of the most amazing herding dogs she had ever seen. Um, and when she saw a bunch of sheep, uh, she totally became exactly what her, what she was meant to be. This dog mm -hmm. came exactly the herding dog that she was born to be. And um, one of her uh, people that she's one of her friends said that you know you have your yourself a top working dog and it's probably worth about three thousand dollars. So 
um, again, just one of these incredible, heartwarming stories about um, about how 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 humans and dogs um, work together. Very true. This is something that it reminds me about: is when you give love, then you receive that unconditional love back, and you really draw the very best out of that individual. In this case, in the dog. Right. Right. Absolutely, and I think that so much, so often we think about it backward mm-hmm, in the sense that, mm-hmm. you know, you read, it's so funny when I read these celebrity magazines and the, the getting married, and it's like, oh, I finally met someone who loves me, you know, <laughs> for who I am. And, yeah. it's like, what you need to do first is love them for who right. they are. And once you love first, and I think that's um, something that we, that's one of the reasons our relationship with animals is so special, because we do love them mm-hmm. first. You know, and then we get, mm-hmm. and, and, and what you get back is, is tenfold to f- what you give, right? Right, right. So, um, anyway. That's wonderful. Yeah. It brings us to the last title that I really like. It's under the, let's see here, My Best Friend. And the title of the story is Someone to Love by Pam Free. Right. Yeah. Um, this is this is a wonderful story about, um, and and you really you really can't believe that dogs do this, but they do, and they often do it a lot, and that's that save us from depression. Um, so many uh, people suffer from, you know. V- sadness, loneliness, that sort of thing, and then sometimes it can go on into full-on depression. Um, and, uh, you know, our lives, are, our lives are up and down like that. And um, in many instances, um, a pet or you know, a pet, any, any pet, dog or a cat, really can help us through that. And um, this is a woman who really was struggling, just getting through the days. Um, and she lost her marriage, her her job, um, and it was, she couldn't even, it was hard to get out of the bed. And it, it's sort of the last thing she felt like she could take on would be, was a, was an animal um, mm-hmm. and a puppy. But um, she did, and she got a, um, a stray, um, one that needed to be put in a, in a, in a uh, special home. And um, this dog literally changed her life in the sense it was, able to help her get out of bed, gave her something to live for, and she became a different person after owning this animal. Um, and it's amazing that a person can be changed like that just mm-hmm. from um, the love of an animal. Well, again, it's the energy that the dog created for her, mm-hmm. and it's a sense of purpose. Yeah, yeah. That just sort of kicks in automatically, naturally, because one of the greatest fear that we have in our life as human being is the fear of not being loved. Right, and being alone. Yeah. yeah. As humans, humans aren't meant to be alone. Yeah, yeah. So this is just a classic example where you could get that from a pet. Absolutely. Yeah, the connection that you're looking for. So it is just amazing. So what's your favorite story among all the 101 stories? I know you mentioned True Angel is one of your favorites. Yep. Are there any others? Well, I I love the funny ones. So mm-hmm. I mean, I there's nothing better. What what Chicken Soup reminds me of, and that's what and what I tell people is, it's like mm-hmm. let's say you have that, that great friend that you never see enough of, and you're about <laughs> to go and have coffee with them, or you're going to meet them for half an hour, and it's just so such a blessing to be able to have sit and have this kind of quality. I mean, quality time together, and they sit mm-hmm. down across from you and they say to you, "Oh my gosh, listen to this story." <laughs> and they lead you like they usually do into this incredible story that makes you laugh and you and you just it makes it fills you with such pleasure. That mm-hmm. to me is a chicken soup for the soul story. That's what I expect from every story that I put in this book. Mm-hmm. That it is mm-hmm. something that I love. So it's for me to pick 101 or my favorite out of 101 is really really hard. Um, <laughs> but my I love to laugh. I love it mm-hmm. when someone makes me laugh. And um, there are some. You know, mm-hmm. called Dog Leg on the Fairway, that mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. is about this these 
these dogs that just wait because the woman lives on the side of a fairway and, and golf, and they just wait for these balls to come over the over the um, over the uh, the head. The dog leg, <laughs> yeah. You know, they're just they're they're just, and I love and a lot of stories that are just truly bring out what what dogs are to us, whether they drive us nuts or whether they make us mm-hmm. laugh or whether they. Um, you know, or naughty, or I, I don't know. I, I just, I just, I, I, uh, I love every single one of these stories. I'm, even the ones don't go in the book. <laughs> you know, there are some crazy stories that I've read that, that bring me just as much pleasure creating the book as the ones that made it in. So, the dogs can get away with it by doing something silly, but right. the owners can't get away with it. <laughs> Well, you know, I think it's was it in this book. There's one, there's one story about this woman who got. Um, I think it's in this one with the UPS guy that um, she ended up, the dog stole, like to steal towels, and she had just gotten out of the tub, and um, the dog stole her towel right as she was crossing the front door, and the UPS guy was there. And <laughs> so she had no clothes on, and the UPS guy was standing right there, and, and uh, she didn't know what to say, and, uh, you know, because she's just couldn't believe she had found herself in this situation and she's like do i owe you anything else (laughs) the ups guy is like you owe me nothing lady and went running away i mean you know it's just Mm -hmm. where we find ourselves in these crazy situations with our animals and it can't help but make you laugh so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very true well let's go to the uh, cat stuff I think okay, the cat stories, they are wonderful cat stories. And yes. You don't have a cat when you were growing up, do you? I mean, have I you did. ever had I did have a cat then? growing okay. up, yes, okay. yeah. Um, my husband, unfortunately, is allergic to cats. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. So so despite the fact we really want a cat, and um, we also live in um, out in Coyote territory. So oh, okay. unfortunately, a lot of the, um, the, the outdoor cats around here um, – don't have such an easy life, so mm-hmm. um, cats are proving to be uh, a tougher pet for us. I see, I see. Well, I grew up with cats and dogs, and both cats and dogs get along very, very well. So it was like weird when people say you fight like cats and dogs. It's like, no, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> because our cats and dogs get along very well, so it's a sort of a weird metaphor, so to speak. Right. But the first story that really is interesting is that it reminded me of my Italian foster mom, who is 95. Uh, wow. She has a vision that's named Snowball. Oh. But, <laughs> so that's a connection for me right there. But anyway, this cat that we're going to be talking about, its name is Snowball. And the story is My Forever Cat by Lisa Wojcik. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is another one of those wonderful stories over like like the true angel stories. Um, the true angel story that we spoke about um, before in the dog book. Um, this is a you know a woman who just had an amazing relationship um, with a cat, and like me, got it when she was seven and um, had it until she was 27. And the death of a cat continues mm-hmm. to be a hole in her heart um, because it was so meaningful to her and. Um, she had it uh, cremated and then kept, and keeps the cat in her house in the closet um, because she didn't want to bury it anywhere. I've heard this story so many times. People don't want to bury their cats because they want mm-hmm. their animals. They want to bring them with them. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, two years after the cat uh, died, um, her child, um, her son Nicholas, was born. And um, she could already tell that when he was two years old, he sort of had this, amazing spirituality that he was really gifted in 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 you know being able to feel and see things and had this this Mm -hmm. clairvoyant talent and um one day he was playing in the floor of her closet um and when she said to him you know what are you what are you doing in the closet honey um he said mommy i'm playing with a pretty white cat and she was just couldn't believe it i mean she Mm -hmm was just astounded and um and she said well what what's a cat doing in my closet nikki and uh he said um she's watching over you she said she's watching over you mommy so it, it, just an incredible story again how mm-hmm. how all this how all this is connected and um how you know <laughs> this relationship with animals changes our lives whether they're alive or dead right right 
And I think the fact that cats live such a long life, one can only imagine the cat seeing this infant or seven-year-old child growing right. up to be a 27-year-old woman. Right. It's sort of a weird deal because we don't think about it that way. But if we were to think about it that way, it's quite an amazing feat, a lifetime, so to speak. Right, right. And the next story is pretty cool, Lipsticks and Kisses by Lisa <laughs> Kirkpatrick Miller. Right, right. Um, this is funny because, mm -hmm. um, let's see, um, this this cat was a uh, close, close follower of um, his owner and followed her around the house. And as... Uh, she, as she was finishing her makeup routine, um, she got ready for work every morning and would put on makeup every morning, and she couldn't find her lipstick. And so the cat actually went and found the lipstick and brought it to her. So it's, you know, again, one of these, you know, sort of crazy, funny stories. I can't believe my cat did that. Right, right. What's interesting about it also, and I mentioned earlier, is the connection that your pet has with the owners. Absolutely. On every that, level, too. On yeah. every level. I mean, this is so, this is so you know, mundane. Right. Getting a piece, right. getting your lipstick. Right. And then again, you're thinking about cats versus dogs. They're two different animals, and they have two different demeanor in some ways, and cats tend to be more on their own. Right. And yet, they're connecting at a different level. And... It's also harder to know with a cat what exactly they're thinking and understanding mm -hmm. and watching. So mm -hmm. it makes it, it, you know, it, it, uh, there is a mystery to, to cats. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Well, the next story is pretty cool as well. Miss Congeniality section. And the title of the uh, article is Guru Kitty by Samantha Duclau Walls. Right. Right. And uh, this is this is great because um, this woman was uh, really motivated by her cat to um, become a healthier person. Um, that every time she was in the middle of doing something, her cat would do do uh, something to remind her that hey, you know, why don't you get up instead of sitting here all the time, or you know, um, you know, going in to get a, a, a thing of food that that she probably shouldn't have gotten. Um, the cat was rubbing against her legs, and and over a series of, of experiences, she was uh, sort of persuaded by her cat to try living a healthier lifestyle. And mm -hmm. I sort of think about that with dogs all the time, because you have to have walk dogs, and dogs right. are very much... Um, more needy that way um, in terms of bringing them for a walk and, and to keep them healthy. But um, the fact that a cat was able to do this is, is is really fantastic. It's true. And it's a unique story because, like you were talking about, dogs are more active. Cats are really passive in a way. I mean, they have their own thing, so to speak. I mean, who would have thought about cat and diet? Right. It just doesn't connect. <laughs> right, right, right. But also, you know, and it's, a, it's an awareness on both of their parts, right? I mean, we yeah. don't really know <laughs> who yeah, it's yeah. coming from, whether it's, but it's obviously this connection that they have together that um, that they were able to influence, mm -hmm. um, or the cat was able to influence her in, in her. a positive way. So that's the very interesting aspects of that relationship. The next one is the cat who taught me. Chutzpah. Yeah, chutzpah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's an um, interesting story. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's great. Um, this, uh, Sara Lee Perel has, has done a lot of writing for us, and mm -hmm. um, she, uh, she has a spinal cord injury. Mm -hmm. And basically after um, surgery, she really had a tough time um, overcoming some of the obstacles in her life. And... Uh, she just felt like she couldn't do things anymore and didn't want to do them, but um, looked over at her cat, who really never accepted obstacles. 
um, as anything but a challenge. And he, the cat, would open cabinets by putting his paws around the knobs and pulling. And mm-hmm. um, when a vitamin bottle would fall on the ground and made a noise, he would play with it. And 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 um, child, you know, child booth magnets to keep the cat out of things. Um, he just pulled even harder to get what he wanted. So um, he really was an inspiration in his behavior to, you know, help her get back on her, mm-hmm. you know, on her path and her mm-hmm. and um, continue on her journey despite um, such a, uh, you know, a challenging situation. Mm-hmm. Really the cat that got her going. <laughs> <laughs> His tenacity and, and uh, really was, was an inspiration to her. This story reminded me of my second dog, Bentley. My girlfriend and I, we shed the dog and what's interesting about Bentley is that he is smart enough to whereby you're talking about, you know, doing things and forcing us to do things. And here we want to relax and he is able to open the door, for example, right. with his pump, you know, door handles, those kind of things. And it's just like, hey, you know, let's get going. Let's do this. Let's do that. And it's one of those things like, I can't believe this. I thought we have a dog just to kind of lay low. Right, right. <laughs> And not do anything, and yet we end up having to do more things with the dog. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> the next story is very interesting, Motown Cat by Victoria Murphy. And this is interesting because I thought I'm a music guy. I like music and dancing and so forth, so I thought this is a wonderful story. Yeah, this is a, this is a, this is a funny story. Um, this is not the first of uh, these type of stories that... Um, I've read. In, in mm-hmm. fact, um, animals can be unbelievably musical. <laughs> Quite amazing. Um, but uh, in this story, um, she, this this cat was just loving the fact that her owner was singing to her. She was. They had moved, um, and she was very stressed out. And um, what the the owner had had moved to sort of be among you know, nature and get away from a city. And, um, the, but the cat was sort of struggling <laughs> with the move. <laughs> and um, she decided, well, in the middle of a bath, she sang to her cat. And the cat just relaxed completely when she was singing. So anytime her cat sort of was looking stressed out and, 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 and um, pacing in the house, and she would just start to sing, especially Motown songs, <laughs> um, and uh, any any song that had the name Sugar, um, her name was Sugar, Sugar Plum, and um, especially any any song with sugar in it, the, the cat just <laughs> the cat just relaxed. <laughs> so um, it's sort of it's it's uh, you know cats and music and pets and music. I mean, again, here we are. You know, mm-hmm. don't know don't know what that connection is, but there's clearly something there. Interesting. And finally, the touching story to me. I think this is a wonderful story. I mean, something that you can really connect with in some ways. The title of the story is The Face Only a Mother Could Love. Yeah. By this, Carol Huff. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is a this is a story that's really hard that 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 will read so much better than I will not mm-hmm. do it justice cuz some of these stories, uh, a lot of chicken soup stories are not only in what the story is about, but how beautifully written they are. And this mm-hmm. is a really, really beautifully written, touching story um, about a woman who has a very ugly cat um, mm-hmm. and that uh, no one would adopt um, from her litter. And uh, she, but she loved, despite his, despite his, um, <laughs> his face. Um, <laughs> and after he had died and she had buried him, um, she noticed a thistle. Um, grow up right near his grave, and nothing had ever grown there before. And as we know, thistles are unbelievably beautiful flowers, but also mm-hmm. pointy and and um, hard to touch. And mm-hmm. um, and the fact that it had it was almost like um, he was coming um, coming from below to say hello. <laughs> those are the kind of things that really touches the heart and move the soul in some ways, those kind of stories, because it really makes us think twice about a lot of things that we do in life. I mean, you talk about the connection about animals and people, and then animals and animals and people and people, and sometimes these are the kind of relationships that we take for granted. Right. Very different. So what are your favorite stories? 
in this book? Well, again, I think um, I think you know it's the funniest stories. I because I just love to laugh. I mean, there 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 are so many. I in uh, chicken soup stories used to be really tug on your heartstring stories. A lot of people mm-hmm. I've talked to um, since I've done the books sort of say, "Oh, I can't read those books. They make me cry." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. We, or particularly me, I mean, you know, working with the dog and, and cat books um, for the uh, publishing company really try to focus on the funny ones, the ones that don't do that, because those are really fun to read. Right. Um, and so to me, it's only, it's the ones that are funny. And, and it's also, I um, mean, one, one of my favorite ones in the cat book, mm-hmm. when we're talking about songs and singing, is yeah. the one that any time a woman sings, the cat runs over to her and puts his paw <laughs> on her mouth. <laughs> Just be quiet. That's funny, yeah. yeah which that's is funny. hysterical. I love that. Yeah. Um, so that's a funny story that I like, and we have a we have a writer who is just a really funny humor story writer um, named Gail uh, McMillan, and she's in the dog book, and she, she has a couple stories in the dog book, and and the way she writes about her beagle, mm-hmm. um, and the chaos that beagle causes in her life, <laughs> it makes me howl with laughter. It just she's she's really really funny. So. Um, you know, knocking people down the ski slope, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, getting getting the tent all tangled up with the kids involved. I mean, it's just very funny. So, um, those are some of my 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 favorites in the books. Are there important lessons we can learn from our pets? Well, I think the biggest lesson is really, you know, obviously love and unconditional love, um, responsibility, um, kindness. Uh, you know, a lot of people learn how to just chill out and relax when they see their sleeping animal. Um, different people learn different things from their pets, um, but all of us learn at least one thing or um, have one part of us that that changes, at least one part of us that changes when we are in a relationship or friendship or companionship with a, with a pet. In what way can a dog or a cat change the owner's life? Well, I think that when you take on a pet, no matter what it is, how much mm-hmm. responsibility, it changes your life. It has to change your life. And I think that that's just the way a baby would. It's not as much as a baby, but it really, it, it changes your life. You, it, it requires responsibility that you never had before. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you will see things in a new way because you're, you have to react, you're reacting to um, them living in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, so it will change, it, it really changes human behavior and i think that's why a lot of people uh, you know have to give up to give up pets because they think that you know the 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 animal has you know there's some behavioral problem and, and really it's the human's behavioral problem the human has to change its behavior in order to make um a successful life and train a dog yeah. and train yourself in order to make it work together so i think there's a lot of change that goes on in both lives having pets have it's a huge responsibility. I think in so many ways it's much more than having a child. Yeah, I mean, having. do you have kids? No, uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me when you have some kids. But um, it's, it's, you know, it's not dissimilar in, in, uh, in it's what it requires from you. Um, mm-hmm. let's, let's put it that way. For kids, I would think there's a sense of responsibility, I guess. Maybe for pets, they don't have that sense of responsibility. Um, a, a sense of responsibility for the owners. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's y- yeah. You you um. It's 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 a big responsibility to take care of another living thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You look at the fact that I guess like for cats, the difference between cats and dogs. Cats tend to be able to take care of themselves in some ways, but a dog can't. Right, right. Yes, that that that's true. I I mean, you still have to change the litter box, and I think different different cats, um, you know, require different things too. Outdoor, indoor, mm-hmm. um, how much you're around, whether there are two cats yeah. involved or just one, and you know, so so much of these things depend on the situation too. Interesting. Where can someone go to buy your books and get more information about you and keep up with your latest happenings? Well, um, you can get our books basically where, wherever books are sold. Certainly, um, Amazon is um, a place I tend to send people, um, and your local bookstore will often have them. If not, they can order it from you. 
um, or order it from uh, us. And um, you can check out, for me, you can check me out on my website, uh, jenniferquasha.com. Um, and you can follow me on all the different Twitter and Facebook and all that sort of fun stuff. So um, basically, hit, hit, your, uh, hit your computer and you, <laughs> you can find more about us. <laughs> Do you have any projects you're working on from now to the end of the year? Um, right now, I am. Um, I've got a few a few different projects I can't really talk about in in the works, but mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, this I'm really right now focused on th m these two new books because they're just mm -hmm. they're so great, and um, I really think they have uh, they they will make a lot of people um, uh, happy if they pick them up. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. interesting. I know we have some wonderful stories about dogs and cats' intuition in both books. Are there any particular one that stood out for you? Um, let me see. Well, certainly the true angel story mm -hmm. um, st stands out. Um, uh, trying to think whether there's anything. It's so hard when you've read so many, and I have <laughs> 100 and 202 to choose from here, yeah. um, what, what stands out, but... Um, there, there are so many um, b uh, stories in here about the intuition that um, mm -hmm. that uh, our animals that our animals have um, mm -hmm. in, our, in, the, in our case. I mean, with with the, their owners. Do you think just natural for the animals to have that sort of psyche ability that connects with the owners? I do. I, I mean. You know, again, the 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 human animal bond and how much time we spend with our animals. There is there just over the years of interviewing people and reading stories and writing articles and and books, I've just come across so many people who have such deep connections with their pets um, that the pets are able to um, respond to you know needs they they knew they had, and the, the, there's no way the pets you know, could tell, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. especially in difficult situations. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really incredible. It's, it's, it's a real mystery. And, it's, and those of us who um, have a relationship or in, in you know, companionship with, with a beloved pet absolutely get it, and we're also unbelievably blessed to have that. That's wonderful. By the way, we're coming close to the end of the show. Do you have a recipe for living life you would like to share with our listeners this morning? Recipe for living life. Yes. Um, well, that's that's a big question. Um, but I think that you know, for me, it's um, you know, it's three different things. I think the number one thing is to be grateful. Um, mm -hmm. The more the more grateful you are for everything you have, even the hard times, um, makes everything uh, better. And mm -hmm. to live to live life. Um, with as much love as possible and to love more than you than you can possibly because it comes back to you um many many times over um and um la and the lastly something i've talked about a lot is is to laugh i mean i just you know laughing makes you live a lot longer um <laughs> so if you can uh, laugh at least once a day somehow um you know that that's that's a pretty good recipe so very interesting, wonderful insights. If you do not have a dog, what would your life be? I let's see. You know what? I actually can't imagine um, life without a dog. I mean, I have I have two kids and mm -hmm. a husband, and you know, maybe you would say you know you have everything in 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 in, in a family situation. Um, but my dog gives me something that they can't provide because they can't because they're not a dog and so <laughs> I, I mean snuggling you know yeah. happiness simplicity warmth like these are not these are things they obviously offer also right. um but I, I actually can't imagine life with 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 a dog and and um i think dave barry once um wrote an article in the new york times about having a backup utility dog um, and <laughs> it's like, yes, I totally get that. I need a backup dog in case something happens to the first one because I can't imagine, um, you know, living life without a dog. So 
That's interesting. Do you have any particular favorite breed that you like? I know you have one now, but technically in terms of what would be a – well, let me put it this way. What would be a good starter dog for someone who is looking for one? That's a question I get asked a lot, and there's mm-hmm. no easy answer for it. Um, mm-hmm. And it really depends on um, what your situation is, what mm-hmm. you perceive your situation to be in the future, and how much time you have. Um, yeah. So, you know, some people are hypo- need, need a hypoallergenic dog. Some people tend, like you said, you like bigger dogs. Um, yeah. You know, do you live in a city? I mean, you can have a great day in the city. It might You might be in a small apartment, but the dog doesn't require a lot of activity. I mean, if you right. live in the country, you're, you know, a lab would be a good choice because, you know, mm-hmm. especially if you like exercise, that, that right. sort of dog would love an exor- exercise. So it's very, um, you know, breed-specific and owner-specific, and you can usually narrow down, um, you know, some breeds that would work well for the situation that you're in. and. And then hopefully you'll consider what, where you'll be in five, ten, or fifteen years, you know, depending on the life of your dog, because um, they will need to go with you <laughs> when your life changes. Because yeah. if you start moving to Asia, then you're going to have to find something to do with your dog. So, right. um, you, you know, so it's I think depending on um, depending on our situations um, is you can figure out what what um, what the best options are for you. And I guess that includes to the dog that you're getting depending on your age because if you're getting it for a child, obviously it's a little bit different than, say, as a young adult and probably, say, I guess someone who is in the 50s, 60s or so. Absolutely, yeah. And there are a lot of, there are a lot of I mean, senior dogs are wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people think about getting puppies, um, mm-hmm. but they're, you, know, you can certainly adopt and rescue lots of different types of dogs, and senior dogs are, are wonderful um, pets to have when you're, you know, sort of not able to offer as much exercise. If you're a senior yourself and you don't mm-hmm. exercise quite as much as, you know, I mean, a young right. lab is going to require a lot from you. So, you know, not only the breed but also to consider age. I think right. um, unless you're an experienced rescuer, um, I tend to um, uh, shy away from, you know, a new dog owner getting anything mm-hmm. but a puppy if they have young children just because, you um, mm-hmm. That that way the puppy will will grow with the children, right? Um, just just for safety issues because they are animals. But um, you know, depending on your situation, I'm sure there's a dog, a dog that's right for you. <laughs> interesting, very interesting. Well, Jennifer, thank you again for the great recipe for living you had shared with us earlier, and for spending this hour with me on from my mama's kitchen talk radio. To all our listeners, thank you for being with us. Please join me next Tuesday morning. My guest will be author Joelle Chabonneau. Joelle and I will be discussing her latest book titled Murder for Choir. It is the first installment of her new Glee Club mystery series. For additional information about this show and future shows, please go to FromMyMama'sKitchen.com. Thank you for listening and have a great week. Jennifer, thank you again and have a great day. Thank you so much, Johnny. It was really fun. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather.